So it, I'm not the first, so the first French accent that you are going to hear today, and uh, not the last also. So I'm French. Uh, my name is Sylvester. I'm in charge of the release management team at Mozilla. So basically, we are in charge of making sure that Firefox ship in a great quality. So before, so before this guy, I had some time off, and I was doing that stuff. So scuba diving. Uh, the diver in the middle is in the room, by the way. So I, went, I was doing that, and I was also doing that stuff. So this one is, is I climbed the Mont Blanc a few years ago, and the mountain that you see is called uh, Mont Blanc du Tacu. Uh, it's a uh, 800 meters wall that you climb at around 2 in the middle of the night. It's super dark. You only have your light. And you have avalanche, and people die every year over there. So the point I want to make here is that Firefox is basically that. So we, we work with a shit load of developers. We do a lot of things in parallel. So um, Jean-Yves show you what we did with Quantum. Uh, Florian, the next speaker, is going to tell you how we did that with performance. My team is taking everything, and we make sure that we ship Firefox in a great quality. So it feels like climbing this mountain every six weeks. But it's a lot of fun. So at first, I'm going to tell you what is Firefox in terms of code and scale and what we do and, uh, and this kind of thing. So first, we make a release every six to eight weeks. So in the past, it was every six weeks. So we had to work during Christmas and so on. And we say, OK, we are going, not going to do that anymore. So we decided to move to a flexible schedule. So now we ship every two months, basically. So it's a crazy rhythm. Like in, in the last year, we shipped seven major releases, uh, including the one that Jean-Yves just presented. And we shipped 26 uh, minor releases. It's probably one of the biggest software ever, ever created by mankind. Uh, it has some legacy and some technical, technical depth. Uh, we, we announced, well, 20 years ago, Netscape announced that they were going to open source their product. We are still based on that product. Uh, since the start, well, since we have the VCS history, we made almost uh, four, 400,000 commits by five, more than 5,000 developers. 18 million lines of code, and we did 60,000 commits last year, and by more than 1,000 people. So the scale is huge. We have a lot of languages. So the first one is obviously C++. We have JavaScript. We use HTML also in our product. And on the, the last line that you see, the, the spike, well, this button, no, sorry. This button here, does anyone know what it is? It's a big spike. Yeah, exactly. We are starting to ship Rust. And it's amazing. And you should not use C++. You should Rust. You should use Rust. It's way better. We have also some web, some, some assembly, some JS. We have some Bash uh, for MS-DOS, Bash scripts, this kind of stuff. So we have a lot of languages in our product. And the, to give you a scale, this is the number of patches which landed in every uh, nightly cycle. So again, six to eight weeks uh, for the last uh, 10 releases. So 58 release at 10,000 patches. So remember, not less than two months. So the reason is crazy. We have a lot of languages, a lot of technology, a lot of new features, fixing bugs, introducing new bugs, uh, fixing performance regression, uh, introducing new performance regression. So we do that all the time. And we have a few tests. So that is uh, the, the number. Uh, you are among the first one to saw them. I think most of my colleagues, they don't know those numbers because uh, they have been extracted a few hours ago. Uh, so every time I push a new commit in Firefox, it is 1,500 hours of build machine that we do. From my perspective, it's about eight hours, something like that, to have the final result and know that I didn't break anything. But we do that for pretty much every commit. And in November, we use November because uh, a lot of people went on holidays during winter, so that is the latest full month that we have. We had 300 years of machine time. So imagine the scale. So imagine that the browser that you are using, the scale. It's every month like that, basically. And it's increasing and increasing every year and every month. So we use a lot of resources. And even with that, we, we are still shipping with some bugs sometimes. So how we do that? So we have basically mostly three kinds of QA. So the first one is that we catch issue during the development phase. Then we have uh, CI, automated test, test suite, and so on. And we have um, humans, basically. So I'm going to start with the, with the nice part, the humans. So pre-release testing. So the web is a crazy platform. I, I'm sure that you are all aware of that, but it's always nice to remember that 
HTML, you can do, you can make plenty of HTML mistakes, but at the end you will still have a web page. If you do that with C++, your compiler is going to insult you. If you do that with Rust, the first line that you write, you are going to be happy when it compiles. Uh, CSS is the same. It's hard to understand. Uh, I have to ask a colleague who, are, who knows everything about CSS at Mozilla to help me with some websites sometime. Uh, JavaScript, uh, we all know the advantages and drawbacks of JavaScript. I won't bitch about this language too much. Uh, we are also uh, managing a lot of image format, video formats. Uh, network is crazy. We are, ma we are maintaining four operating systems with different architecture. So it's uh, the matrix of combination of every case that we have. It's impossible to test automatically. So we, you, need, you need humans at the end to test and to give us feedback. So from in my team, we manage the, the train model. So we have, I won't go into details. I went at FOSDEM like four years ago, three, three years ago, and I did a keynote on that. So it's an hour. I can talk like four, four hours about that topics if you want. But I won't, so we have a train model. We, we have stuff landing in nicely every six weeks. We create beta and then we move that to release. And we, we take patches from central to beta and to, to release. It's very typical. Uh, so we rely a lot on the user on the pre-release channels. So we have Nightly, we are doing also some experiments. So sometimes in Nightly we are going, and in other channel, we are going to send to some user a new feature and we are going to disable it. It is what we did with Stylo that uh, Jean is presented before. We enable that to 10% of the population on Nightly at the beginning, then we, we fix some bug, we move to 50, then to 100, and we did the same for beta, and then we did the same for release. So it helps us, it really helps us to uh, catch a lot of issue. Now we have two Nightly per day. In the past we were doing only one. Now we have so many commits and we have a lot of people in Europe, so we prefer to have a nightly also for European in the morning. We don't have to wait until three in the afternoon every day. And we do, uh, we have a lot of users on nightly. So the nightly population, a lot of company would kill just to have this user base. So on beta it's even bigger, we have millions, and on release it's way bigger. So it's crazy the scale of, and the number of users. Uh, here, again, Johanna could do, uh, talk to you about that for an hour, about how we do manual QA. Uh, so we have people who are testing the feature. I, I know how they work, and it's very impressive, the kind of issues that they can find. It's like, if you click there and there and there and there, you are going to have this bug. And they have some amazing uh, step to reproduce. And we are using those results to decide if the feature is ready to move or not to the next train. We do that all the time. Last year, Pascal uh, presented at FOSDEM his, uh, his proposal about Nightly and, uh, and to reboot the Nightly community. Uh, I'm very happy to say that it was a success. We doubled the Nightly population. We reported almost 1,200 bugs. Uh, and then the, the Twitter account, which is a good metric on how people react to what you are doing, uh, jumped to a, a huge number. So we. It was very, very helpful in 57 to make sure that we ship a great quality product. We have also some, a bunch of people who are helping us with Sumo, so support Mozilla, to gather feedback from users. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff that we have to dis discover new issues, like new crashes and these kind of things. But in some cases, like crappy graphic card and uh, some uh, antivirus issue, sometimes we have like, my Firefox only shows blank pages. And, uh, and we don't have any telemetry to identify that. We don't have automation, so we rely on user feedback. And those people from the Sumo team, they are able to collect that feedback and bring that to us and say, okay, what should we do? And in most of the cases, they are able to pinpoint exactly, okay, they have Casper Key version X, and it is causing that issue. I'm mentioning this one because we had that in 58, and it was one more time because of an antivirus. We have also web combat, so again, we rely on the community to uh, report some bugs like Firefox on Android is broken for Twitter. I, uh, when I press this key and I go in this page, I'm going to have twice the same later. It is that bug here. So we reach out to website, to web developer, and so on to fix the issue. Uh, it's JavaScript or CSS or HTML. As I say, it's very complex. So we, uh, we have a team who, who is doing that. So now I'm going to move to uh, one of my hobby. Uh, I'm also uh, involved in Clang, so I'm a compiler guy. I was complaining about C++, but I'm, I'm involved in a C++ compiler myself. So uh, C++ and C are very, lang very hard languages. So at Mozilla, we have some amazing engineers, and sometimes they, they forget to clean the memory or they forget a new check, 
and this kind of stuff should not happen. That's why we are developing Rust, by the way. So if you don't know about Rust, you should try it and replace it with Rust. But uh, so we detect, we, so we, to mitigate that, we, we, we developed and we deployed some tools to uh, identify issue. This one is an actual bug that I fixed in, uh, in NSS, so which is used by Chrome, Java, um, Firefox, uh, Red Hat, and a bunch of companies. So they introduce a new argument, and someone just forgot the comma here. So it is totally standard in C. Uh, what C is going to tell you is that they are going to concatenate the two string. For human, you know that it is stupid, but for a computer, it makes sense. So it is this kind of issue that we, we are finding in the code. So we fixed most of them, and we have automation to catch them, but it's, uh, they are stupid languages. So, uh, so we are also catching issue in our API. Uh, our base cost is huge, so we have some, uh, some tools which are going to check that you are not uh, shooting yourself in the foot. And we are also trying to limit the code legacy. Uh, C++ 11, 14 introduced some new cool feature to simplify the code, so we have warning to the developer saying, okay, you should write that this way instead of this way. So in terms of tools, so we are using Clang Analyzer, which has been, as far as I know, developed initially by Apple. Uh, we have our own shaker, which are also based on Clang, on libclang. So in that case, we are, we are checking some security issue, bad usage of the API, uh, best practices. And we are also using Clang Tidy. And if you do C++, I recommend that you use that tool as part of your CI. Clang Tidy is amazing, and it is uh, telling you some best practices, coding style, performance issue, uh, upgrading your code automatically from old version of C++ to the new one. So we are contributing to this project. And at the end, when the code lands, we have also Coverity, so they have, it's very expensive, but they have a free version for, for free and open source software. So that is uh, basically where we are at. So here, I know that someone is going to ask me the question, so I'm going to answer before. It's because of uh, in the file, which was used everywhere in the base code, and Coverity was thinking that it was the same issue. It was duplicating the issue, so that's why we have sometimes some big spike. But we have been fixing slowly and slowly the backlog. Some of them were security issues, some of them were performance issues, memory issues, and so on. So this is an, a work that we are doing a lot. And fortunately, Rust is fixing a bunch of those issues. Right? So, an initialized variable and threading issue and this kind of things. We have also, as I said before, we have a lot of languages in our product. So we have uh, now some uh, linters or static analyzers, depending on the way you want to call them, for JavaScript, for Python, for Java, for Bash, and for typos. And what we did is that we introduced them as part of the review process at Mozilla. So here it's a, it's a custom checker from ESLint. Uh, that recommends you to use another class or object instead of the other one. And um, we do that for every commit, and for every commit we do C++, JavaScript, Python, uh, not yet Java, but Bash and Typo. It takes about 12 minutes to run everything, and we do that for, one, for every commit. So now I'm to going to talk some about some things that most of you are already familiar with, is crash analysis. So in Firefox, when we read a crash, uh, you are going to have a window. In the past, it was breaking your browser. Now, it's just breaking your tab. And if you click on Send, please do it. Uh, it's very helpful for us. We have a lot of automation which are going to use those data to identify what are the priority developers should work on. So it's going to send the stuff to a platform. We are doing some voodoo magic, so basically clustering the signature to make sure that we know that it is the same issue at the end. And, uh, and then we, we have been working for the last two years on a tool called Cluzo. Uh, the French in the room know that it is a detective, and he's trying to find clues to fix, uh, to fix his uh, study investigations. So what we did is uh, it was a stupid idea, and as far as I know, uh, not, not, any, not many big projects are doing that. So we look at every new crash that we identified in, uh, in Soko, our platform. We are going to extract the backtrace. We have that from our tooling. And then we are going to look at the, rec the recent uh, VCS history, so Mercurial or Git. And uh, we are going to look at every patches which arrive and which line or which file and which line they touch. So uh, at that moment, we are going to uh, match the two and see, okay, this patch which landed yesterday, it's touching exactly the same uh, file as which is mentioned in the new crash. So we have been able to report uh, more than 200 bugs 
And I don't know if you realize, but it is huge because usually these kind of bugs are going to be fixed only on beta or in release when they impacted a lot of users, but now we are able to fix them within 24 hours. So it's huge, and if you have big projects with crash analysis, I recommend that you spend time doing that. Please. And everything is open source, you can reuse it. Please contribute. Same, uh, as far as I know, it is the first time that someone did that on the scale of Firefox. We have code coverage. I know that sounds, it sounds uh, pretty easy, but on the scale of Firefox, uh, it's huge. And, and we, you, if you wanted to do some JavaScript code coverage, it was pretty hard. You had to use some Java application, which were not maintained and so on. So we, we introduced a support in, the, in Spider Monkey like two years ago to do that. Google announced that a few weeks ago for them. And we had also to introduce the support of code coverage in the REST compiler, and we had to patch uh, GCC, LLVM, Clang, Compiler, RT. And we had to develop a new tool to replace Elkov, which was a Perl script, and it was taking 24 hours. And obviously, because we want to do that every day, it doesn't scale. So some guy in my team, uh, who is in the room, we developed that in REST, and it's taking five minutes. So. And once, ag once again, it's open source. It's not specific to Firefox, so you can reuse it. So in terms of results, we realize that uh, C++ is about 55% code coverage. So that means that 45% of the code in Firefox is not automatically tested. So we have some third-party stuff that we compile and we ship, but we are not using them like some old codec or some libraries. But it's still a pretty bad percentage. But in JavaScript, the percentage is pretty high. So uh, in terms of comparison, LLVM, Clang, and LLDB, the so code coverage is uh, 80%. But it's way easier to, uh, to test a compiler than a web browser. So as a side effect, we also developed a tool to identify uh, which file have uh, zero code coverage. So either way, it's a bug. So either it's dead code, or you don't have any test. So you should do something about that. So we, we started that not a long time ago, and we already removed 60 files. And uh, we, have, we realized, OK, they are useless. But there is still, as you can see on the right hand side, uh, like the graphics library, uh, we have a lot of files which are not tested. Many of them are because of third party code that we embed, and we are not using it. So we should investigate how to at least remove them from the build phase. Everything that I explained is also to uh, limit the the code legacy and the technical depth. Every small step is going to improve the quality of the product at the end. It may seem trivial, but if you, if you consider that Firefox has been living for like 30 years with Netscape before, and we hope that it's going to be the same time frame in the future, you have to limit the introduction of dead code and stupid bugs and programming mistakes. So I will go, I, I'm mentioning that quickly. I'm not a specialist in fuzzing. We have a team dedicated to that. So I'm using here, it's a, so fuzzing for people who are not familiar, it's just basically sending stupid, thing, stupid things to the compiler or to the JavaScript engine or to some API and finding bugs. So for the last two years, we discovered 600 security issue thanks to that. So again, if you are a software developer and you are not using fuzzing and you can use it, you should investigate. We have also some other best practices. So we are uh, compiling trunk every, uh, Clang trunk every day, and we are using it to, uh, to compile Firefox because new, uh, new, new warnings and new checks are being introduced on a daily basis into compiler. It is finding some issue. Sometimes it's bike shading, but uh, in many cases it has value. And we also report bugs in the compiler. So on here, like six bugs or seven bugs that we reported on GCC and GCC8. So we are also el helping the community and other compiler. It's a win-win situation. We have automation also. So we have a crazy CI. I, uh, so when you are a Mozilla developer and you do Firefox, you are very familiar with this uh, web interface. So every letter means a test suite or a subset of the test suite. Every uh, black element is a platform, basically. So you have, we have optimized Android, non-optimized Android. We have Linux optimized. We have Linux PGO. We have Linux debug. We have that for Windows with different platform, and so on. So if it, if this explains the 1,500 hours. So it is, we are doing that all day. So we have also some uh, 
here it's hard to see, but here it's orange, here it's red, so orange is intermittent issue because we have so many multi-threading things. In some cases, we have bug which occurs once every 1,000 runs, for example. So we have orange and we have people who are going to flag that. Runs been a, usually an error, not always. Sometimes it's an orange, we don't know. But. So this is the scale of the, of the Mozilla CI. We do that at every commit, and uh, we have, as developer, we have the capability to trigger, OK, I just want this test suite on Windows uh, 32 bits optimized. We have this capability, and we use that a lot, because we know that it is costing a bunch of money to the company. Despite all that, uh, so I show you everything that we are doing. Uh, when I made the slide, I was like, OK, we are still shipping with plenty of issue. But uh, someone in my team did some stats, and we realized that, like, our biggest issue, the red stuff, is antivirus. So antivirus can be also malware or security, or security software, but we are fighting all the time because we don't control that. It's the same. The, the blue stuff at the bottom is a hardware vendor driver, understand graphics drivers. So it is really the biggest issue that we have. We have a, a huge test suite. We have a lot of people testing the software. We have a lot of tooling. But really what is uh, costing us a lot of time and a lot of money is third-party applications who are trying to improve the life of our user, but actually they are not. They are either crashing Firefox, slowing down, or showing a blank page, like I showed. And we are facing that all the time. So it's the same with Chrome. Uh, Chrome Google announced a similar uh, initiative a few months ago, and they are fighting that. Uh, if your Firefox or Chrome are crashing on Windows, usually Windows, it's probably not our fault. It's probably not Google's fault. It's probably because of your crappy antivirus. And they are really doing some nasty thing, like security software. They are going to plug into our DLL, and they are going to gather a lot of information on what you are doing in your web browser. And in case we change the binary layout, uh, security software doesn't know where to plug, and it's going to crash Firefox. So from the user perspective, like, oh, but they, are, they, are still, they shipped a new release. They are stupid. They broke my Firefox. Well, it's not our fault, but from the user perspective, it is. And uh, we have also, we, as I say, it's impossible to test everything uh, in the uh, web ecosystem. So sometimes we ship with web recursion. One of them was with Stylo, the CSS, uh, the Rust CSS rendering engine. We broke the web version of Outlook. I promise we didn't do that on purpose, but we are, we are trying to fix that. We already have a patch and so on. But it is really the complexity of what is shipping a web browser. So I know I took fast, but I am. I'm done. <laughs> and I'd like to thank uh, the people who did the stats for me. Uh, I, asked, I bothered a lot of people. Uh, three of them are in the room. And um, we are I'm using also the audience to say that we have two interns in the team, one to work on static analyzers, the other one, the other one to work on code coverage. So join us. And if you want to contribute, feel free, feel free to reach out to me. Yeah. <laughs> And, and the